So I make this all sound like doom and gloom, that there's nothing we can do, we're going to die from everything, but there are solutions. There are ways to move against or move away from chemical pesticides. So one way is using plants or flowers as a natural deterrent. There's a lot of organisms that emit smells, good smells, bad smells, but really strong smells. So for example, peppermint, lavender, basil, dill, these are all plants that have a very strong smell. And a lot of insects can't stand those smells. They are deterred by them. It's actually a natural remedy, a way to get rid of mice is to put peppermint all through the openings of your house because it is a very, very strong smell that just deters them. I mean, think about you. If you walk into a room that smells really, really bad, you don't want to stay there. It deters you from there. So you'll actually see a lot of new age farms actually planting tons of wildflowers, especially along the outside of their field for that very reason. Plus, you can also sell those wildflowers uh, for an extra commission. Another way to decrease the use of chemical pesticides is undergoing polyculture. Remember that polyculture, poly means many, so planting many different crops. We talked about it earlier on a very small scale level, so growing crops for yourself, but it can be done at a widespread level. You can kind of see that here in this picture. You have rows of different types of fruits and vegetables, and there's even flowers uh, in its own row as well. So let me give you an example of why this works. Hopefully at some point in your life, you have done a Where's Waldo. And right now, I know I've lost you. We are looking for Waldo. I will tell you where Waldo is in a little bit. This is an example of polyculture. And all the different types of people are representing all different kinds of plants. Now, most insects are gonna feed on one type of thing. For example, the tomato hornworm. When it's in its butterfly stage, it is looking for tomatoes. And let's say you go across a field, a polyculture field, and you're looking for tomatoes, and it's incredibly hard. More than likely, you're just gonna skip over that field and just keep looking until you find an easy target, finding a whole field full of tomatoes. So this would be an example of polyculture. And now that you're, oh man, now I forgot where he used to be. He used to be like over here somewhere, whatever, you'll find him. He's over somewhere, there he is, yep. All right, so there's Waldo. So here, found my tomato plant. But it was hard to, right? And if you're an insect looking for a tomato, you're just gonna keep going. So this is why polyculture can be beneficial when it comes to pesticide use. Whereas a monoculture, if they are all tomatoes everywhere, it's very easy to find those tomatoes. So Waldo is everywhere. I can find him very easily. But again, if I was a tomato, I wouldn't have to worry about it. Or if I was an insect um, looking for tomatoes, I wouldn't have to worry about it. Bam, here are all the tomatoes. So this is how polyculture can be better than monoculture. Another solution as well is just to cut back on pesticides. And I know that kind of sounds counterintuitive, but remember pesticides can kill our naturally occurring predators, such as that parasitic wasp that attacked the hornworm. That was a natural predator. So by cutting back on our use of pesticides, that can encourage natural predators to come back. You can actually buy those parasitic wasps like from the store and release them into your garden. But if you're spraying pesticides, you're just going to kill them anyway. So it provides like a really nice ecosystem service. Another example are ladybugs. Ladybugs eat insects called aphids. Aphids are small little green, ooh, small little green things uh, that will attack your plants and eat your plants. You can also buy ladybugs at the store. I say store, like a specialized store. Combine them at the store and then release them into your garden. But again, if you're using chemical pesticides, more than likely you'll kill the ladybugs as well. And then finally, another way that you can attack uh, naturally occurring pesticides is using pheromones. So pheromones are hormones released by insects and really other species as well to find a mate. The males will release it into the air and have the females come find them and vice versa. Females release them and the males go to find them. So what happens, depending on the species, a box is released. So in this box are the pheromones. 
and the males or the females, depending on the species, so let's just say the males, the males smell these pheromones, and they start going towards it, and they go towards it, and they go in the box, because they're like, oh, inside the box. That's where all the, for the pheromones are. If I go inside the box, I'm going to get my lady, and I'm going to get laid. That is not what happens. They get in the box, and there's no food, there's no water, and there's no ladies. Uh, it's actually, it's a sausage fest. It's just a whole bunch of other males that also got trapped, and they end up dying because of the lack of food and water, etc. So essentially you're just starving them to death. But you're attracting them with a naturally occurring chemical, the pheromones. Pheromones have no effect on any other organism except that organism. The other picture is just another example of what a pheromone trap looks like. There is a downside to this though, because you have to replace the pheromones. Like the pheromones eventually run out and you have to go back out there. So if you have a really, really huge farm, this can be kind of a problem because uh, that's a lot of maintenance you would have to do. There is a video, but this lecture is just about done, so watch this video at the end of this lecture. So as a summary, our agricultural practices use a lot of chemical pesticides. Those chemical pesticides can cause tons of different effects, such as affecting other organisms that we find useful, such as honeybees, or, you know, kill the natural predators. It can also harm humans. You know, people die every year because of pesticide exposure. We in the United States, I wouldn't say we don't care, but because we try to preserve the integrity of businesses, we kind of let businesses do what they want and we don't regulate them as much, which is why we have a lot of problems with our different pesticides as well as really chemicals in general. But not to fear, there are ways to kind of deter the use of chemical pesticides, such as polyculture, using natural pheromones, using plants that are really, really strong uh, in scents, as well as just don't use them and let the natural predators take over.